Now, say my name. The Rolling Bad Podcast. You're goddamn right. Welcome to the Rolling Bad Podcast, episode number 27, coming to you from the desolate wasteland of Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're recording on June 10th, Coalescence Day, and I am your host, Elric Edge. With me tonight are... Bill Costello. James Tapia. And Ryan Taylor. Tonight, we're going to be doing our normal stuff, as usual, but uh, we also have a huge chunk of Coalescence talk we want to we wanna go over. We just did our Coalescence event today. So that's why we have Ryan in studio. He was kind enough to run the event for us. We all had a pretty good time, but we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. My side still hurt from laughing so much. (laughs) I think we had a pretty good time. Yeah. (laughs) Let's do a show. Let's do it. The Realm of the New Dawn, where we're going to talk about uh, the releases from Games Workshop over the last fortnight. So we had Skirmish Drop. The actual physical copy of Skirmish, yep. which we think we talked we about We covered already. last time, yeah. Yeah, never mind. You're sitting, you're looking at the new map. Oh, you did pick up the fancy yeah. new map. You know, and I even came in here and looked at it, and I was like, this is the new map, and it looks good. It's the best And then map. I was just like, yeah. I'm used to, I guess, you just always having the new, <laughs> new shiny. It's not in shrink wrap. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> we can see the beautiful hammer. Yes. Yeah, I was about to play out the hammer. Nice. Uh, I guess you were saying something about some of the copies of this had some pretty blurry imagery on it. Yeah, I'd seen a couple of pictures on Twitter. A couple of people who'd got the mat, and there's a couple of areas where that, you know, bright orange hammer is that was just, it looked like the print had been off. Hmm. So, but it looks like you got good copies. Yeah, this one looks pretty tight, so. Yeah, it's again, it's their normal 4x4 mat. Again, it has the the edges sewn up, so it's, it's, they're pricey for a 4x4, and, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they're that. Only maybe like five or ten bucks more than some of the competitor. Than a frontline gaming mat, but yeah, the frontline gaming mats are you. You know, you're paying four or five bucks or five ten bucks more for a four by six. Oh really? Because this one comes in at what eighty five. Oh, so never mind then. Yeah, so they're they're a little pricier, but you know, again, it's flagship company stuff. So yeah, hopefully they get the shipping thing because that seems to be what is preventing them from doing the four by six. Is a, a yeah. shipping. That's what Rob was talking about on a on a Twitch episode, and so hopefully they can get that sorted out because I would love to have this on a four by six. Oh yeah, I would like. Well, we talked about it before when they did the crazy corn mat. Like how cool it would be to have uh, Frontline and whatnot doing some of the more uh, neutral style mm-hmm. mats, and yeah. then having like these crazy cool graveyard type things coming from Games Workshop as well. Yeah, it seems like that's kind of the methodology but yeah they they got to fix that shipping thing somehow is there anything that came out it's you know for age of sigmar obviously with with 40k coming out here yeah. in six days it's the well is dry so and it, obviously they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna torpedo their own big release this is yeah, a huge thing for them so we really don't have anything to talk about in the new dawn no they released the those you know the getting started boxes for skirmish with the bands the war bands but other than that i don't really think of anything can't really think of anything out yeah unless of course you want to delve into the myriad of things coming in for 40k which we won't do this time because we gushed last time well it's not really that much either. i mean it, it, it is but i mean it all revolves around the dark imperium box and yeah and the stuff, know, the, the stuff to get going playing the, the game yeah. it's dice and combat gauges and <laughs> yeah yeah, I was dumb enough to buy the <clears throat> collector's edition. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did? Yeah, oh, I did. I... Well, and it was so funny because I was on the website like five minutes before 11, our time, which is when we it goes up for sale. And I was like, man, I got to hit this button. I got to hit this button. I got to get this thing because they're going to sell out in two seconds. No. And I mean, after I bought it, I was like, yes, I got it. I'm the man. Drove all the way down to AI, came back. So hour and a half trip. And they're still up for sale. There's no sold yeah. out, no nothing. And I'm like, wow, am I a goob? <laughs> I, yeah, I checked it about four hours after everything went it, up and it was still. I don't think it's sold out yet. Really? With a $420 price tag? Yeah. it's That's steep. It's more expensive than Smog, right? So that's... Uh, I think Smog is 450 Yeah, he's a little Maybe more. Maybe it was the New Zealand site. 
that I was looking at. Where yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's goes. right there yeah. for sure. And you're probably going to get as much use out of either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I can't wait to do my unboxing video for that because I got a pretty funny thing planned. So. Nice. Yeah. But that's it for New Dawn, I think. Really? Yeah. I can't yeah. think of anything. Let's go to creation where we can talk about stuff James did. <laughs> <laughs> The, the realm, realm of, of creation. creation. Well, we're going to talk about what we've been up to in the hobby the last two weeks. Bill, I think you have some stuff. I did, sir. I started since the Rolling Bad Rumble's coming up, and one of the things I said I was going to do was build that hell fort. So I've got two of the towers built. Now I've got to build the Malefic Gate and the Crucible yet. But it's that weird Chinese plastic kit, so the gaps are really pronounced in it. The one thing I do like is... The stuff for the corners is separate, so when you put that on there, it's going to hide most of the gaps, which is really nice. But it's going to be a fun to paint, I think. it's gonna. I'm not sure exactly what scheme I'm going to do it in. I thought I was going to do it for Zinch, but I think I might actually do it for corn. you know, a nice. little more standard. But I think a little more bloody than some. I don't know. But yeah, working on that, crushing that away, and I, uh, I finished up, well, mostly finished a Bastilladon, so he's... Pretty much ready to hit the table. I've still got to base him. Uh, unfortunately, that was it. I had to do some stuff to get ready for the coalescence event. So I, I spent all last night doing that stuff instead of this. So, But that's all I got. So, uh, Ryan? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm adding to the podcast here. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. It's, it's That's great content. <laughs> yeah. So it's what your listeners want to hear. Yeah. yeah. Right? Make them feel better about doing no hobby. Because yeah. we don't, so <laughs> yeah. it's like a support yeah. group. We lead I, by example. I don't <laughs> hobby so that I can connect to our listeners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like James has just really pushed your listeners further and further yeah. away. <laughs> what a way to create a divide between us and the fan base, James, by showing them up. <sighs> no, I better than anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've actually been hobbying quite a bit, so. I gave up on painting the overlords. Uh, James, <laughs> At least it wasn't a week before. Right. So yeah. I'm not here. Giving you, giving you a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm going to have James paint them because F that. <laughs> I'm not particularly enthused about the army anymore to begin with. So uh, I'll build them. You can paint them. Take them to Slobberknocker. Get my teeth kicked in. And uh, I don't know. I'll go from there. But I've been building a ton of them. I pumped out like 40 Arcanauts. And I still got... I don't know, like 15 uh, engine riggers and another 30 thunderers to go. Got in a bunch of boats. Because despite me sitting here preaching about how terrible the boats are, I had to buy so very many of them. You kind of have to have at least one of each. I I, I think it's a rule. Yeah, I'm but sure. I didn't need three of each. Oh, God. Yeah, and that's kind of... Wow, that's quite a few. It's yeah. going to be a really nice display board. Yeah. Yeah. There. It'll be, it'll be a... <laughs> army to play for narrative events. I had this great idea that you take one of the big ironclads, seal it on the inside, we load it with helium so that for your display board, it's actually floating and moving around. Um. Yeah. It's just a thought, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I like where your head's at. <laughs> I don't know if that would work, but uh, probably not. No, no. Just get like a kid's mobile where they're like caught and just touch oh, where they spin? Them to it. Yeah. yeah. And spin it around with like Raid of the Valkyrie. Yeah. Just playing. Or, or I could fill the balloon up with hydrogen. Oh. And recreate. The uh, Hindenburg. And at a certain point, we light it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> or yeah. dwarf manity. I don't know. No. Just dwarf in your last game when you've been beating, yeah. like, five games in a row. <laughs> <laughs> we have one of them with a the wooden spoon. Yeah, right. <laughs> By yeah. a cunning rock. Here. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do some serious hobby, James. All right. <laughs> you missed some old lines on these. Yeah, so that's how desperate I am to get them away from me. <laughs> is I did not meticulously scrape every single mold line. I'm just yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't I don't even want to talk about the army anymore. 
Uh, so what did I do? Well, you had a narrative event. So I painted up nine skyfires. <laughs> fluffy. Hey, <laughs> later on, it, we will find out. It is fluffy. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll wait till later on to hear this uh, gem. I want to hear background. this backstory. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think it involves a portal. Yeah, okay. In a forest? In a forest. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh. So, did that. I think that's all I've been doing for the last week. I did any hobby last week. No? Nope. I'm very disappointed in myself. You feeling okay? Are you as disappointed in yourself as we're disappointed in you? Let me Let me answer that for you. No, because... <laughs> Not only are we disappointed in you for not pumping out a gratuitous <laughs> amount of hobby, but as the listeners will find out later, we're also disappointed in your concept of narrative. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, the game stuff. Yeah, battle. The, the realm, realm of, of battle. battle. Where, because the edge was on. We're actually going to just roll straight into the realm of lore because not like take the edge off or whatever, because the edge was on. We're going to talk coalescence, which is going to include our games, but also coalescence as a whole. So Ryan, our guest here, friend of the show, Ryan, our foreign correspondent. Recently married, Ryan. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Took it upon himself to travel from the great north of Colorado down here to run coalescence for us so that I could actually win an event that I didn't bl- didn't run because the edge was on. Spoiler alert. Jesus. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, oh, look, the listeners know <laughs> that I'm the one that wins. Okay? Listen, Cupcake Gamer. <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, it was a narrative event, so really we're all winners. That's right. right. No, Some of us just won age of harder Sigmar than others. One today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> the last victory it's gonna have for a few months i think uh, yeah <laughs> so what made you want to run the coalescence event ryan um i think for me it was it's a different type of event than it's been down here before and i think the the neo guys on twitter and the tga um, really put a lot of effort into it and took away a lot of what i had to do for it so yeah. I just got to show up with very minimal work and run um, a three-game event that I knew people would have fun with. You know, I think a lot of what we we do in the hobby is geared towards tournament games. Right. And I think we forget that there is the other two ways to play, even though we kind of use match play. So, Well, match play is always just useful to have to kind of streamline things. Yeah. Agreed. You know? Yeah. So, right on. So I guess let's get into the event a little bit. We had eight players total. Yeah, yeah, eight. yeah. in and out. We had a couple of yeah, we had free a couple floors. of rotators. Yeah. So. Um, you know, James had to take a couple of hours off after his first game to recover. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he actually just sat in the corner, rocking back and forward. Yeah, going, it's fluffy. Yeah, it's fluffy. <laughs> but yeah. the Iron Jazz did it to me again. The Iron Jaws did it to me again. <laughs> uh, so the first round, we all paired off. I played James. Mm-hmm. And uh, how'd that game go, James? Let the listeners know. Well, I enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah. Yeah? It was a good game. <laughs> I, I think first you probably need to go over your fluffy, narrative-driven um chaos list that you brought i mean disciples of zinch right. um would be uh, and how, how did you bring the army together what was your this? what was your background like what was the what Link. was the rich story of your your leader your general <laughs> the hero that was seeking the shards you want to capture the shards and win <laughs> <laughs> i just realized you the a team come on he's yeah. not gonna bring the b team 
I just realized that hanging your head in disappointment doesn't translate well <laughs> in an audio <laughs> format, but no, there it was. None whatsoever. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. So basically, your narrative was, uh, I like to win, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's why you had nine sky fires and a Lord of Change and 1500 point list. Lord, uh, change host and a change host and nine sky fires. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how'd, that, how'd, how'd that work out for you? Pretty well. Yeah. Got okay. Tabled. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. So, for those who did not play, all these scenarios are custom made. So, the way this one started was whoever had the lowest average movement of their army got to set up anywhere from 6 to 12 inches from one table edge. So, uh, a little bit in, but only 12 inches total. Yeah. You went, you got your first turn, and you had to try to get at least a third of your army off the other table edge. That was the whole goal. Uh, I was the the shard seeker. Yeah, shard yeah. seeker. Because I was playing mostly uh, brutes and ard boys. I had one unit of piggies. So my movement was pretty low. So I was the shard seeker, and I hauled ass across the table. I had my destruction move, my formation move. I moved like... 19 inches or something like that with the unit of brutes and all this looked like I was, I was basically just going to win the scenario off of that. Then we realized that you could also win the scenario. If I just ran everything off right away, then you marched across and also got your stuff off. Then it was kind of like a, this weird tie. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of your turn, you put all your stuff on Mm -hmm. uh, behind me. And at a moment where I was like, why would Iron Jaws move right. away from a fight? <laughs> yeah. This doesn't, like, this does not make narrative sense. So let me run my piggies and my hard boys off because they're garbage <laughs> units anyways and secure the win. And, uh, yeah, Mega Boss Diet Crunk turned around with his boys, his, his brute squad, and just charged back in to the entire <laughs> demon host of Zinch. I think, well, before that, we had a cheeky... Shaman. Yeah, around. so we started it off with the with the fireworks and did sixteen mortal wounds with a foot of gork, a mushroom print of gork <laughs> on a Lord of Change. This was like the best thing ever to watch as well. You know, because you had left that shaman behind. Most <laughs> yeah. of the army had surged forward to get off the board, and you know, you're just like, see you later. Little shaman in the back. <laughs> yeah. He's Can't like, keep up. He's like, okay. And then he just turns around and just, you're like, you know, I'm going to go and do Arcane Bolt. And then you're like, nah. nah I was going to Mystic nah. Shield. Mystic Shield. I was going to Mystic Shield. And I was like, why would I Mystic Shield when I can put a Gork? That's All right. right. You always put a Gork. <laughs> Even when you know it's a bad idea. Even you when a, a simple Arcane Bolt could get the work done. A foot of Gork is so much better. It, it really couldn't against this Lord of Change. Though, right, but right. This food just came down, and it was perfect because it was like six wounds straight off the bat. Right. Okay. And James is starting to sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, okay. And you roll the die again, and it comes up a five. You're like, stomps again, four. You're like, roll it again. I think it was another five. Yeah. James is like, does he do it again on a five? And you're like, on a four, <laughs> six wins, take it all. <laughs> Boom. Monstrous. So, yeah, that was uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. And then uh, my brute squad looked at the nine skyfires and were like, we got this. Charged in, and I think the brute boss killed three of them on his own. Dang, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, deleted nine skyfires in one round. Mm-hmm. They didn't even get to fight back. I think two of them did. Yeah, they, they fired your yeah. fire boss. So that That's was it. tasty. And then, yeah, you were left with a, a shaman and a whole bunch of horrors mm-hmm. that I systematically Destroyed. removed like a big blue pimple. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I don't think it helped, James, though, with the fact that um, all the terrain on that side it was, was more. mystical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of ones that kind of uh, screwed up that whole that whole battle line. Yeah. Happens. So, yeah, yeah. Did we not say it was like the perfect storm? Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't I wasn't gonna really, you know, ride this one too high because <laughs> it was it was literally handed to me on a silver plate. Uh, you know, I'm starting within charge distance, basically with my entire army. Yeah. Whereas if 
basically we had played like a 2000 point match play game. I don't think my army even remotely stands a chance against your ability to like run and shoot and just pump out gratuitous amounts of mortal wounds. Yeah, probably. Plus, you know, the foot of Gork doesn't, doesn't always work that way, but his won me some clutch game. So it's good stuff. Yeah. You just need that bill and vortex room. Yeah. Right. Big investment there. Yeah. So that was our game one. You want to say anything? Uh, I scored it? zero points. Yeah. Did you like, get any of the secondaries? Nothing. Yeah. I think I killed one unit, one you model. Ki- you killed my war chanter. That was it. And then I killed uh, your brute boss. My, no, my uh, mega boss. Your mega boss with the with the battle brew. Because mm-hmm. I was Oops. told that if I'm going to bring battle brew, that I got a double swig every time. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's only fluffy. That yeah. diet crunk <laughs> would go try and be more extreme than crunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So double brew all the time. Yeah. So he killed himself after he didn't do anything that game. <laughs> he walked forward. <laughs> he drank his bow brew. He walked into the sky fires. He elected to go first with the, with the, brutes. the brutes. The brutes touched the sky fires in the, the right places. <laughs> they disappeared. <laughs> and he stood there four inches away going, can I reach? No. no. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, that hurt. Not and the first died. time four inches has been too short. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> and once again, the brute boss did like all the heavy lifting. He's really, he's eyeing the crown. It might be time to take diet, diet crunk down <laughs> and ascend to the, the mega boss position. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 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 That was fun. Yeah. Nothing I like, so. Nothing like beating James again in another event. Oh, God. And like, you know, whatever. <laughs> Cutting that part out. <laughs> it, it was highly contested, though, who wanted to play James when we found out his list at the start of the tournament. Yeah, right. Or the event. I, drew, I drew the very short straw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turned yeah. out to be a good move, though. Yeah, so. that's true. So I played the LVO champion, Andrew Standiford, <laughs> yeah. in the first game, which was kind of interesting because... It was more Stormcast against more Death. So your I, favorite matchup? Yeah, actually, it's not. It's not all that bad. And I kind of knew the only thing that I was going to be able to do in this game is, you know, the way the way the scenario worked. I had a higher, which was this is really kind of strange that my Death Army had a higher average move than his, even though he's moving all over the table at will. I still had, you know, the six-inch move because of the ghouls. Yeah. So, yeah, I was the guy chasing him, which was comical at best. But I also knew that having my vampire lord mounted on his trusty steed of a zombie dragon. Beautiful model. Oh, it was anyway, beautiful model. totally <laughs> fantastic model what? that what I you... managed to leave at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he was proxied, you know, for the first game by a, what was that, a vermin lord deceiver? It, yeah, 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 that Ryan really lent vampire-like. me. Really vampire-like. He was. He was truly yeah. vampire-like with the dragon. And yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, but I knew my only hope really was to get him off the far edge of the board to at least make it, you know, an even-numbered game. I, I don't. I was, there was no way I was going to beat the Stormcast at their own game. So that's what I did. Was I? I just put all my guys on one side of the board. And then use my ghouls and my mourn ghoul to try to engage some of his stuff so that he couldn't just chase me down with his entire army. And I just ran like a little girl and got off the board. So, which guaranteed me a, a share of the win. We, we drew that game. So, I mean, it was kind of a cheeky, cheesy thing to do, but I didn't really, I didn't feel like trying to go toe to toe with an army that was just going to mortal wound me to death. So not when I can do nothing to him in return. So it was actually a fun game. We had a good time. So it came pretty close to the end. I think we played into the top of five, I think. So before it was just that uh, we were at the point to where we weren't going to score any more points. So there was no, we just kind of put it up and said, let's get the next game going. Yay. So that was my first game. And that covers the first round. It was an interesting scenario. The way you're both setting up on the same side of the board, just one behind the other. But I think the way they figured out the movement stuff could use maybe a little tweaking. I'm not exactly sure how to make it better. 
it wasn't bad by any means, and I think it gave it equalized a lot of different armies, but I think there might be a couple of tweaks that should be taken into account. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I think Elric's army was a great example of an army that is slow in theory, yeah, with the low movement, but then um, could surge forward with the double destruction uh, move all the time. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. with the piggies. Yeah. yeah, you had like an average four move, but you were actually moving nineteen inches a turn. So yeah, or the piggies more. were nearly off turn one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with how far they had run. I think yeah. they moved a total of I don't know twenty some inches. Yeah, the first turn. So it was. Pretty, pretty good. So I think maybe, you know, one thing you would maybe look at doing is in that first turn, you can only move your base move. You can't do any movement shenanigans at all. But then you wouldn't be able to get away. Yeah, but that's the idea. Is I, I, Like I said, I don't know the perfect answer to that, but yeah, that's, you know. Well, we'll look, at, we'll look into it. Everything. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that you can look at in that to, yeah. to take into account those different shenanigans. So, so game two? Skip that one. It was stupid. What? Skip game two. That was stupid. Why? <gasps> oh! <laughs> That's right, Bill. <laughs> Who'd you play? So, James, how was your game two? James wasn't there, Bill. Mm, damn he it. He was still James in the left. corner. Yeah, so, he was still rocking in the back and forth in yeah. the corner. <laughs> it's fluffy! It's yeah. fluffy! <laughs> Having flashbacks to a giant green foot stomping on him. So, game two, I made a mistake with my list and let Elric win. There. Yeah. Happy? Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I brought a thousand points worth of ghouls and, and, forgot, no ghoul to, patrol? and <laughs> forgot to bring the stuff I needed for ghoul patrol. I mean, I brought it all. I just didn't have it in the list and I didn't want to do a last minute adjustment on the list because that's kind of gamey and lame. That's what so. I did. I wrote my list right there at the table. Oh, great. So I was able to tailor my list specifically. With the wide variety of options that Iron Jaws have access to. That's true. Especially at a thousand points. Yeah. <laughs> Orc on a pig. Yeah, Orc, Orc not on a pig. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's, that was your... I was disappointed that you didn't run a wall crusher. At a thousand points? Just in general. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wanted to, but... Here I was trying to be narrative, not realizing that you were tailoring your list to my army. Yeah, I yeah. knew. <laughs> I knew it was scary. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I got my face hammered. So yeah, that hey, was good times. that's a podcast. So anyway, <laughs> so in this one, uh, all the terrain on the table is an objective, and mm-hmm. you have to be in base contact with it in your hero phase and roll a four up. You take control of it. Whoever has control of the, the most pieces at the end of the game wins. Pretty yep. pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, it, if you had the most pieces, it gave you the ability to give out a command. A command ability, sorry, where you could either give plus one to hit, plus one to wound, or plus one to your save on mm-hmm. one of your units. Uh, neither of us really used that because well, we were tied for most yeah, of the time I was alive. Uh, I kind of when I deployed, I kind of had it in my head. I was like, okay, well, I'll take this, 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 and this. Like in the first two turns, I'll be yeah. like sixty or three pieces yeah. of terrain because of my speed. Yeah, and then I rolled like ones and terrible twos on rolls everything. Too. I was like. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm just going to sit here for like two turns. And then I thought, well, I'm going to end up screwing around yeah. trying to take this like one or two odd pieces that I can't seem to get a four up on in the backfield, in the backfield while you're going to move around and waste like more than me. And yeah. I said, well, screw it. I'll just get out there, yeah. draw you into me and, yeah. and, uh, punch you right in the nose. Well, with, you know, with 40 ghouls, it's very important to have some mechanism to actually replace them as they take losses. Especially in units of 10. Yeah. Against things like brutes. Yeah, against brutes. So. Who, yeah. Who can delete 10 of them with, you know, a sneeze. Yeah. So, quickly. yeah. So, yeah, I won. So, and the... Through no great skill, mind you. Through pod... my poor planning. Sure, whatever you just, need to tell yourself. Just uh, want to cover that. <laughs> So I beat both of you. All right. This would not be the first time that I beat both of you in an event. Would you guys say that I'm... I mean, obviously you wouldn't because you're too modest to uh, say that I'm the greatest on the Where podcast. did you finish at LVO? I, I forgot what this number you were. This is an LVO. Oh. I, that was my time to try to let you knuckleheads shine. And you pissed it away. All right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if I... Go towards the bottom that I will boost you guys to the top. And it didn't work. You failed. You guys failed in your 
your end of the deal. So your I, theory now I is... I tanked to help you. Ah. But no. But no. But... So, to remind you guys, in this event, I had to slap you around a little bit. Okay. There, there is <laughs> actual bile in my throat right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So... I won. Whatever, uh, you know. We had a lot of laughs, yeah, though. That was a pretty funny game. I mean, I, that was a really fun game, I thought. I was laughing, so. Oh, in our game? Yeah. What? I don't remember you laughing. I remember a lot of cursing. I was cursing at my dice, not you, though. That wasn't you. You name your dice Elric as well? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Elric, you piece of... Cur- oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to name all my dice Elric. It's a fairly common name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I it is. It. I get it. It is. So... <laughs> That was pretty much it for round two because James didn't. James had to go sit out for round two. Yep. But he was Family back for round three. He did. He, he, well, he, after he got out of the corner, eventually <laughs> oh, yeah. he, uh, he had to disappear. I actually picked up the Chaos Mantle for that uh, oh, yes. round two game. Oh, yeah. yeah that's um, right. So that Chaos would not just get disqualified as a faction <laughs> from, from the event. <laughs> So I ended up playing a, a nice young chap called Mike, who, in all fairness, had, hadn't played a lot of AOS, from what I could tell. Yeah. So I took no Skyfires. What? I know. It might not sound as fluffy as Where's James's your narrative, list, man? Uh, but I did take a Vermin Lord Deceiver. Nice. Which I'm officially calling the most fun model in AOS to play with. Okay. It... Unless, when we get on to game three, which I also got to play in, you forget to do something, which is kind of key to making them fun, which is scare leap. So, turn one, I I got to go first, claimed like six pieces of terrain um, in my deployment zone and and close. Um, And then Mike really forgot about that whole scenario thing. Um, Yeah, Mike, Mike does that. Yeah, he was running a mixed uh, Wanderer um, Stormcast. Stormcast. And mm-hmm. I've never seen Wanderers before in AOS. And I, I've seen Wood Elves. Um, turns out they still have that rule where they shoot a random arrow at your general. Yeah. Uh, turn one. Didn't do anything. No. Um, so now the Vermin Lord was a little bit pissed. He <laughs> just decided to jump across, kill half his army. Just by running in. Um, <laughs> wow. And he wow. got down to two wounds. And he was still there and just running around. I was trying to give him the narrative of killing a big monster. Right. But I think Bill had touched his dice. Yeah. So yeah. They, they started rolling pretty low. And so he's just slowly walked across the field. Not ever finishing his move, touching a piece of terrain. <sighs> so that in his hero face he could claim it. He was always an inch away or running off it. Uh, so I got seven points for chaos. That's a key number. Let's keep that in mind. Seven points for chaos. For chaos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It will come up again. It's significant. <laughs> I'm there. So. All right. So, game three. Game three was the free for all. It yeah. was the sort of a 500 point. We played four people per table, so we had all eight players at two tables. Yeah, kind of a triumph and treachery yeah. style thing. So, I guess I'll go over ours, because me and James played on the same table. Yeah, you guys sure. do yours, then we'll do ours. So, why don't, why don't you tell us about, when when you had the chance for a 500-point list, James, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you're trying to tell a story for a narrative <laughs> event, not, you know, table one at Adepticon round five, uh, what did you decide to bring in 500 points? Well, I had to bring a lot of change. Sure. Because he was my character. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? Duh. <laughs> had to bring core. Yeah. Or battle line. Battle line. Which is pinks. Yeah. Which are blue. Yes. I, <laughs> that was I awesome. appreciate what you did there. <laughs> <sighs> I had... It would be a shame when you can't play those at the Rolling Bad Rumble. <laughs> and then I had 60 points left, so I... Threw in some blues. That were blue. That were blue. Right. Not pink. Not pink. 
because they're blue because they're blue horrors so you painted them blue but you yeah. were like well blue so much fun i'm gonna go ahead and paint my pink <laughs> horrors blue as well and then you know what i'm gonna do like i'll paint my brimstone horrors blue because <laughs> why not cool. i mean yeah anyways i don't want to be the purple silver now yeah uh so that was your super fun fluffy time narrative whatever uh what, what did you have your son bring <laughs> if 500 points there he James. Was not me yeah yeah no outside influence from the old man None. sure yeah yesterday at taco bell i said here's his ear build your 500 point list uh-huh what was his narrative though I have no clue. Oh. They came from space to beat face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> it's my I, narrative. Maybe your Samuel L. Jackson snakes on a plane <laughs> was the the influence on this list. Yeah. That's what I got. Apparently, Tomb Kings haven't quite gotten over the fact that they're axed from <laughs> the line, <laughs> and they're still still bringing the heat. What was what was the list, James? Uh, I think he had a unit of zombies. Yeah. It's death. You gotta bring zombies. Sure. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? What brings the zombies to life? Necromancer. Right. Fluffy. Mm-hmm. So far, Tasty. I mean, it's almost like he's putting marshmallows on the table. It's so good. <laughs> Super fluff. And, and then, so, uh, so what, what else did he manage to just, What else did he manage to just kind of squeeze in there? <laughs> with like a shoehorn. <laughs> I think he had like 320 points left. Right. What, what fits 320 points when you're using the wrong points? You're using the right points. Yeah, sure. Whatever you got to tell yourself. Points. Yeah, right? I mean, they're in the GWF. This is here. This is yeah, this is here. I mean, it's like super legit <laughs> for cereal. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bring the flop. What did he have? Huh? What was that pillow that he hit us in the face with? Six snakes? Yeah, six, six necropolis <laughs> nights at 500 points. <laughs> yeah, that, that was tasty. I mean... <laughs> Oh. I mean, we had six snakes on our table as well. Yeah, yes. but you had a but... Muppet pushing them around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but... Like, let's totally I mean... Change it. But... <laughs> guess who also wrote that list for that place? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Show up. I wrote that one. Because maybe 12 snakes happened to be in the thousand point list. So, I mean, obviously, what would you do when you cut the points in half? You just yeah, cut the list in half. Snakes off. Six yeah, snakes and, laying around. And you would not want those six snakes to go to waste. So you might as well grab some random clown out of the crowd and say, hey, why don't you push these around and, and score some points for death? Bill was supposed to give him a list. Bill didn't have a list for him. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have stuff Bill's to fault. give him. No, no, no. It was Bill's <laughs> fault because there were other armies to pick from. There was Sylvaneth he could have taken. Yeah, he could take taken Sylvaneth. Yeah. And play or Stormcast. Our table. Or Stormcast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that's what we had on our super fun, fluffy narrative. Capture the Shards table. Six snakes. And the Necromancer. And zombies. And, oh, and zombies. Yeah. I, I certainly <laughs> wouldn't want to take that away. Don't sure change them. That was fluffy. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a Lord of Change casting three spells a turn. <laughs> Two spells. You cast three that one turn. Yeah, you did. Pink's cast one. Oh, whatever. <laughs> they all look the same. That's what happens <laughs> when you paint everything blue. <laughs> uh, anyways, so then we also had uh, LVO champion Andrew on our table as well, playing his Stormcast. Playing a pretty lean Stormcast list, I thought. Had some prosecutors, paladins, liberators, and... Uh, <laughs> And a night venator that was uh, j- transfixed on something shiny in a piece of mystical terrain for almost yeah. what seemed like the entire game. Oh, that poor guy! Shiny, chasing shiny. His, he was chasing his tail. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, and he finally caught it. Uh, I've dropped my star faded arrow. <laughs> yeah. God. So it was a pretty cagey match for a while because no. Nobody felt like running out there because basically it was a rush to get to the middle to rack up points. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody felt like taking six snakes on the chin. Except for you. You got you got pretty close to the middle. Yeah. Well, I'm Iron like... Jaws. I don't. Turns out we're the Wu Tang clan of Age <laughs> of Sigmar. All right. Uh, so yeah, I moved up there. 
and then watched five five brutes get melted by mortal wounds from spells from uh, Zinch, a super fun fluffy fluff time. <laughs> uh, and was like, okay, well, it turns out I'm going to have to actually do something about this. Uh, so I took uh, Mega Boss Diet Crunk and moved him six inches away from your Lord of Change. And mm-hmm. this scenario gave the ability to issue challenges with yes. our our heroes, which meant that if you got within six inches of a hero, an, uh, of an, your opponent's heroes, you could issue a challenge. Uh, you automatically moved within half an inch of them, and if there were any models of any kind in the way, they were moved out of the way. Uh-huh. And then the two heroes that were in the challenge could not be targeted, basically, by anything outside of the challenge. And what did I do, James? What did what did my mega boss do? Ten wounds. Huh? Ten wounds. Yeah, he collected the rent check. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Came over there, slapped the uh, the chicken down. Yep. Good times. And then, actually, he pretty much deleted your entire army. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, except for like four, four blue horrors. Three. Three? Yeah. Yeah. So, he went beast mode. Yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Ah, good times. Good times. So, that would be the second time. You tabled me? Tabled you. In one day? In one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With Iron Jaws. Against Disciples of Zinch. I don't know what everybody's talking about. <laughs> disciples of Zinch aren't really... I mean, I didn't have a problem with Skyfire them. Skyfire is like, whatever. I like, just took them off. <laughs> took them off. Whatever. Move so on. then you're saying all the stuff that you've said for the past year about Iron Jaws being so lame is just kind of your lack literally of experience unplayable. with them? Yeah, literally <laughs> unplayable. <laughs> uh, just pulling a curry. Eating your own crow now? No. <laughs> just pulling a curry. He's got a strategic plan. He's going to say they're all... Yeah. They're garbage, and then when they lower those points. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, brutes need to be about 40 points for five. Mm. This is about right. Only, the only way they'll work, all except 60, begrudgingly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I ended up winning it. Uh, the Stormcast got stuck in on uh, those pesky snakes and died to a man. <laughs> Didn't even kill them all, did they? Nope. Nope. The nope. snakes did not go bye-bye. And then... Andrew tried to challenge my mega boss the last round with his fly boy. And unfortunately we both whiffed. So it would have been awesome to, uh, send his packing back to Sigmar, but I was unable to deliver on that one. Oh, so yeah, that was round three. Good yeah. times. Iron Jaws three and oh, look at that. So maybe they don't, you know, suck so bad when you use them, right? I don't know. I'm just thinking. Or that, you know, scenarios let you. Yeah. Or it could be tailored for you to win. Wasn't oh, he on? Yeah. tailored for me to win. Yeah, I was about to say, wasn't he on the Neo team? Didn't he help rank yeah, this pack? Yeah, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little ah. suspicious there. I, I, will, I will assure you the rest of the people on the Neo team will let you know that I did absolutely nothing <laughs> to help. Of value? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, was, I was there for dick and fart jokes mostly. Okay. Well, that's. The yeah. morale officer. Someone I was the morale to, officer. Someone had to be there. Yeah. So on our table, it was a slightly different story. Yeah, we uh, we got put at the kitty table, um, which know, was the, a lot the more hyper fun. competitive people. Yes, we're all well. Sorry, super fluffy narrative people. We're <laughs> With a competitive streak on on yeah. the other table, um, so we came down on our table where we had. Well, we still had six snakes. Yeah, we there, did, and no one wanted to go near them. Not um, really. We kept trying to convince the guy running them to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. We tried to play mind games and say, you know, what's really good is to run those snakes into the corner. Yeah. And and, and to be fair, the guy that was running the, the snakes um, had never seen their war scroll yeah. before. Yeah. So, it also helps that he's so simple that he probably did run his stuff into the corner thinking that that was the best. Actually, his first turn was kind of like, I'm just going to wait back here. Well, yeah, that was when we were going, okay. So we, we also had a new person sitting next to us yeah. and uh, trying to learn the game. And just let me put it out there, that is the worst way for a new person to learn yeah. the game. You get to see how everybody gets to have fun, but um, when there's four people on the board, yeah. game three of an event... It's not the best learning experience for no. them, I don't think. Especially when two of the four people don't really play the game. 
And then there's Bill who you know he plays the game it. but doesn't really know what he's doing. And then there's a mixture of dice. There's GW dice. Where did you finish LBO? I'm, I'm just trying to think. Where did you finish? Oh Tanked yeah, it on purpose. Or, yeah, on to purpose. Help you. Yeah, you blew it. That's right. I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> you think. blew it. I'm trying to think about how much that was on purpose right after LBO because he only dropped that one today. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to tell you that you blew it. I didn't want to tell you that you were a disappointment, Bill. Did I was you hoping ever you would tell you you yourself. go the same place for lying? You go for killing? I, I, did she <laughs> never tell you that? Okay, so <laughs> anyway, back to go our ahead. game. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, our anyway, lovers' quarrel so is over. Just, just hug it out. It's yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, you're in the middle of us. So. Yeah, so. Don't hug it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, don't. Um, so, yeah, we we had a, a pretty good time at our, our table. Considering I was the, the Neo for this event, we didn't really follow the rules of this scenario too great. Okay. Until about turn three when we went, oh, you get points. Yeah. Um, to be fair... Did you did you not even read your own pack? I did read it, but <laughs> I, had a, I had a fair bit personal stuff going on recently, and that's no excuse. If you're going to run an event, read your pack. Um, but I got caught up in the moment explaining to to Chad how a necromancer works. Yeah, or yeah. the hero phase. Right. Um, and he's played the game before, so yeah, he's was... he's a he's a special boy. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, He's, he's the one that thinks that Albuquerque's down the street from Cincinnati. <laughs> Midwest Wargaming. Yeah. Midwest, yeah. yeah baby. Um, Hashtag. I just want to say I was out there getting into him the whole game. So, I mean, nobody challenged me in that first two rounds. Bill moved forward. Everybody else stayed still. Apart. <laughs> so, here's where my mistake came with the most fun model in AOS. Okay. <laughs> um, two things happened in this game. The first one, uh, I eventually get my turn, you know, because there's four players. Four players, yeah. Getting all excited. I go, oh, I'll cast Mystic Shield on my uh, my Vermin Lord. <laughs> then I realized he only gets one spell per <laughs> per turn. Yeah. So couldn't scare leap. So he was sitting there all all buffed up. Yeah. With Nowhere to no go. place to go because he had <laughs> a little ring of Reavers around him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, super fluffy. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. They were turning into rats. <laughs> Honest. Um. So sort of there, and then. The next turn, I'm like, okay, no Mystic Shield. Let's go. Scare Leap across beside the snakes. I was going for the Necromancer. I was going for the, the showdown. Six inches away. I'm like, I've got this. Roll a five. Yeah. I channeled my inner Terry Pike. No. <laughs> so you didn't know that you could just automatically get into combat with him? Issue the challenge. Issue the challenge and you could have just tried. It would have been advantage. automatic. No. <laughs> <laughs> we uh I was trying to explain the game to the new person beside that's my excuse. She sure. was busy. showing how things worked. Um so, so because I filled that charge, I then got charged by those super fluffy snakes. Yeah. Because they didn't have to go far. It's only six. And inches. they actually have a banner that allows them just to go six. Like yeah. a lot of that death stuff from like nine nine one. Um <laughs> right. They, they, they have it. They've just got it, and they can go for it. Um, so he came in, and I'm like, whatever. This this vermin lord, when I took it to Broadside, did he, well, he always died, but he, he did great stuff, took on a Durthu, you know, um, killed a bunch of stuff before he died turn two. Um, so I'm like, I've got these snakes. I can take them out. <laughs> oh, sure. That warp okay. stiletto is awesome, you know. Three ran, D3 damage, threes and twos, re-rolling the twos. Yeah. Yeah, he died. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah, like, I'd never, I'd heard about snakes. <laughs> and I, I'd built up a healthy <laughs> hatred for them, just by osmosis. Yeah. And then um, the writers hit, and I'm like, that's not too bad. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and then it turns out the giant snake that they ride is infinitely worse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, so so he died. And and at that point, I basically had some Reavers yeah. and some Plague Bearers. And I was like, eh. So just move them forward. Once I realized that if they move forward, I got points for Chaos. Yeah. Just moving in, getting the, getting the points. Attunement yeah. points. Yeah. So. so are we going to gloss over 
the fact that you taught a person to play by not reading the rules. Yes, we are. Okay. I so, just wanna... I'm just going to go... No, like, this guy is brand new. And so he was asking questions. Um, as I scare leaped across, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and charge now. And he's like, well, ha- what does charge mean? Yeah. So that's the level that this person Yeah, is so on. to be fair, this guy yeah. has never interacted. No. Like, he's not a guy who, oh, I played 10 years ago. I'm getting back yeah, to Yeah, no, it. this was like, a I never used to play Mage before. Knight, and I'm interested. Like, he had never yeah. had any no, previous knowledge to tabletop games. But also, before you think that we've done a disservice to the community, he showed up at the beginning and stayed until the end. He was mm-hmm. having a grand whole time. Yeah. I mean, it was... Yeah, he'll be back, I'm sure. Yeah, we so. went over... Uh, Everything was He's got some there. wanderers yeah. that he's, yeah. he's painting up, and he was looking for paint and hints and tips. Yeah. And so we're going over that. And I, I think what would have been better in this scenario was it would be to put you... All you guys just on one big table. Yeah. And me again not to play. So I could have sat down and actually just went through. Run a quick game with a him. A normal ish. Yeah. 500 a point demo game. game. Mm-hmm. Basically. Mm-hmm. But he did get to see to... the good part of, you know, the club and the hobby where everyone was having fun and laughing and not taking sure. this very seriously, yeah. you know, to the point to where blows are going to, you know, be thrown or anything. It was, <laughs> I mean, he was laughing with us. He was, you know, he, he fit right in right away and said yeah these guys either he'll be back or he's like at home right now going honey i met the goofiest bunch of losers today (laughs) (laughs) and And we're moving to to phoenix (laughs) um chad had to leave a little bit early as well so uh he actually got to for a couple of turns to run that snake snakes Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, so so I think we've got him hooked on that narrative fluffy gaming. Sure. Right. Um, he's, he's in there. He's going to be really disappointed when the new General's Handbook comes out and he spent all this money on snakes and they go up in price. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think he's going to stay with his Wanderers. So Morgles are down in points, too. Yeah, that's true. That's how they it, make it It balances up. it out, right? So yeah. you pay more for your snakes, but you've got... N- you basically you get enough. a free Morgul for every unit of snakes that you buy. That you didn't get, yeah. Yeah, so... so. It's a beauty thing. It balances well, out. Well, for your yeah, for your twelve snakes <laughs> you get in there, your two morangles make up the difference mm-hmm. in points. So it's it's just a wash. Yeah. Really. It's yeah. a fair trade. Yeah. yeah. So uh he actually did more damage than Chad did. Most well, Chad <laughs> killed the Vermin Lord. He then actually moved towards the objective. Yeah. Like moved them. Slightly. He shuffled them. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, the the new guy came in. Yeah. And uh So you're saying a guy who's never played AOS <laughs> No <laughs> Play the army better than Jack. Better than yeah. I I'm yeah, yeah, I'm definitely saying that. Yeah. Um and his excuse was I've never seen it before. So we gave him the war scrolls and he looked over them and at one point I was like there's no point in attacking them. With what we had, because we weren't able to do enough yeah. wounds, because the banner brings it back. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, I just read that on the war scroll. Every death wizard can summon. I'm like, that's that's the wrong rule, Chad. He's like, no, no, I've got a it- necromancer is a death wizard, so he can heal a wound on <laughs> Did he do it in his typical sarcastic, like... <laughs> He's like, Chad. no, no, Ryan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. If you check Article <laughs> B, you know... <laughs> no, English still reads the same in Cleveland there, Chad, so don't... <laughs> Welcome to it's episode 27, the, the personal attack episode. Yeah. Uh, we love him. Yes, to death. He's, he did show up. I he's mean, like the it. little chihuahua that has a a head cone on all the time. You know? What are you going to do? Red what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, so, those were our games? Those were our games. Yeah. Yeah. Who ended up winning yours? Uh, death won death. ours. Yeah. So nobody just, just okay. general, general death. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't Bill. It was the new guy because he had his snakes. So oh, God, so snakes. He, he touched things and it made them go away. Like, yeah, it was just like if from the start they had just moved across the board. I'm pretty sure they could have got to the other side without stopping too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, sounds about right. Yeah, Couple he played. He played Age of Sigmar on God mode. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the best way to it's like taking somebody to the casino the first time and they just win a ton of money yeah like yeah this is how it works every time don't yeah. worry it's like but, <laughs> it's God mode. Shock. oh yeah. no that, yeah I'll have none of that, that. Oh, yeah. I don't need to read those rules I yeah. just need to 
What's this mortal wound thing? Oh, I can do how many a turn? Sweet. Watch In me addition go. to normal. In addition, I, yes. I think that's the weirdest thing on that. Just, sorry, I know we're talking about snakes for a long time here, but uh, normally when you have one of those abilities, it does like instead mortal of. wounds. It's instead of. This and these an snakes are just to... like, yeah, just an addition, bruh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still going to hurt you, yeah. but I just wanted to hurt you a little bit more. A little bit more. A little yeah. over the I top. I see a hurting. salt in the wound yeah. rule there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the person who wrote the Tomb King's War Scrolls was like, I'm tired. I'm tired of being on the bottom. It's our time to shine. We're going to secretly, I'm going to secretly write War Scrolls that are ludicrously powerful. <laughs> yeah. and, I, think, uh, I think it was just the editor played tomb kings yeah and like they're going through and he's just like yeah just and print Whee! Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did everybody take a look at this yeah yeah, yeah we're we good did. right <laughs> sweet you guys play tested this right <laughs> uh, robin um, cut us you, you you check this out right okay we're robin. going to print <laughs> yeah. robin you just want to give up once over it? yep yep we got that <laughs> <laughs> nothing to see here <laughs> So that was uh, our coalescence personal experience for the games. But overall, fantastic event. I yeah. Think. Oh, heck yeah. 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 We all had a tremendous amount of fun. I was going to say, side still hurt from laughing so much and not just at the podcast, but <sighs> yeah. from the it day. Was, it was incredible. Uh, and I was checking my Twitter throughout the day, oh, and yeah. it was just a constant yeah. wall uh, of people. Yeah. So there was, I believe, over a hundred games reported yeah. worldwide with an average of ten players. Yeah. So it was like three million gamers. Yeah. So I did gamers. the math real quick. So yeah. back of the envelope math. So American math. That's a hundred thousand people playing, <laughs> and then each played three games against three different opponents. So, so that's nine million games of Age of Sigmar played today. Right. The All narrative. Event. By far. So basically, GW needs to scrap match play. Yeah. Just and go narrative. do narrative. Because, yeah. There's I definitely think. a demand for it. Yeah. Definitely. Like the population of Scotland we're playing today. Yeah. Yeah. Just narrative. But only Scotland. Yeah. It, it, Everybody it else. <laughs> Everybody else They're is like, out doing other things. Yeah. And Scotland was like, no, no. Today, today is Sigmar's Day. day. Yeah. 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 This Tomorrow, is what we do. They, they probably all went out tonight yeah and just got drunk <laughs> and so tomorrow will be like match play day yeah in Scotland. <laughs> it'll be a, a slightly worse experience because everybody will be hung over but oh yeah i mean we only had one rules dispute in the entire day and it wasn't even anything to do with age of sigmar i think that's the yeah. biggest difference the scenario between, rule yeah uh, oh yeah, with with the challenge yeah that's and right yeah just yeah leaders yeah so um, but I think that's the, the, the strength age of Sigmar. Uh, and I think we've not really seen it as much here in this community. Um, that narrative side of things. That, Definitely. And I think that told with the lists that people brought. Um, <laughs> but they're not, just not quite used to it yet. But I think yeah. the amount of fun that people had today here and across like every picture that was on twitter every picture that was on facebook was just people having a good time and yeah. i think that i love the group photos that, pe- that everyone was posting oh yeah like, i mean you know, it was how many just... people they had at their event i mean and it was going on at warhammer world too well know. and i think the biggest thing like ian you were just mentioning this but i mean from early this morning i mean early early this morning twitter was just a wall of yeah. Hey, you know, the New Zealand guys have started. This is what's going on. And we were getting these early reports. I know one of the things we made a change to scenario one based on Feedback. a Facebook post that getting. Dave Whitech from Garage Hammer put up saying, hey, you know, in scenario one, you need to do this in order to make it flow a little bit better. And, you know, yeah. a bunch of people chimed in and said, yeah, it helps a lot. So we made that change, you know, and it's as the time was going around the flat earth, you know, as the sun moved in a parallelogram pattern across the flat oh earth God. um the you know we were we were picking this stuff up and we were getting it and it was fantastic and it can only get better i know i did a tweet about the middle of the day about you know we can only build on this kind of success now the yeah. next one is going to be just nuts sure. as if this one wasn't but i mean yeah i can tell you 
you know, from being on the inside or whatever, that like, we did not anticipate this level of success, the, how popular the, it was going to be, um, we thought maybe a quarter yeah. of, of the, of the events, you know, yeah. worldwide and, and it was everywhere. I mean, like I said, it's just, you know, check your, if you, if you want to see more of it, obviously there's a Facebook page for uh, a neon page, which would be a good place to go. There's a coalescence page as well, but it's the hashtag C G N E 17. Yeah. Check that out. And I mean, it's just a constant way, a uh, flood of yeah. posts and pictures and stories and, and it's awesome. Craziness and, you know, just, yeah. you know, you get to see my, uh, shaman do 16 mortal wounds. Too. Mm-hmm. What the, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So, but that's the stories that came out, right? That's yeah, a, yeah. Like your your shaman would never have got close enough to that level right, of change in yeah. a normal game without being mortal wounded off, sure, uh, either by himself or. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he tried to do that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's these stories, and um, I'm actually interested to see where the the core Neo team, you know, the that the guys that actually do stuff. <laughs> Yeah, the, the people on the inside with you. They're, they're right, that. yeah. Um, where that story is going to go. Where, you know, it'll be interesting to see who won overall um, over the 100 events. Yeah. Like, which faction did it? Mm-hmm. Who got the God Beast? What are they going to do now? Where, where does that story go? And how can we maybe link that in a future narrative event as well? GW just need to make God Beast models, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we don't have enough big, expensive models coming out. Yeah. 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 No. I mean, I think it's a scale God Beast. Yeah. Yeah. That would fit on a six by four and you, basically be the six by four. Yeah. That we could play inside. It could be like, <laughs> ooh. It could be like one of those uh, magazine, you know, part works that they could do. So, like, for, you know, 600 bucks, you get the claw. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only you know you can sign up subscribe three to weeks for, later you get you know, 344 more issues and <laughs> you will have your entire god beast yeah um i could see gw doing that yeah maybe. kind of like what is those chess sets or whatever yeah, that you yeah, get like exactly. one piece at a time or, or just, the big or ship just models that you get a little bit yeah like i don't need the whole body just like a head so that you can set up some really cool dioramas or like just a claw <laughs> well, I mean, like the head would be the size of a Mini Cooper. Yeah, so. maybe you can make him so that he's miles away in the sky if it's a dragon, right? And then it it'd be smaller because it's further away. You going with some like Peter Jackson style shots here? Yeah, yeah, okay. like uh, artsy, yeah, yeah. yeah. cinematography um, type. Yeah. The guys are really real close to the. Yeah, yeah. You, you stand over there. Okay. Archeon here, God Beast there. Right. Yeah. Just so you can fill on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe just God Beast spawn. I mean, surely Ooh. these these God Beasts, you know, we see in the art all these really cool creatures. I'd just like maybe GW just to do a, a creature pack of just the different creatures. Maybe we'll see it when they do the OS RPG. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's something Let's that get some could be worked in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it also touching on that. It'd be maybe in the realm of Forge World. Yeah, to just because they used to do that. Just like here's some big, cool, crazy monsters to yeah. kind of add into whatever. I don't see why they couldn't. Although with what GW is capable now with plastics, oh my god, it's hard yeah. to argue. It. Well, that new corn dragon yeah. is yeah. humongous, ridiculous, so. huge. Um, Overall before, thoughts of Coalescence? It was, yeah, it was pretty good. I would have to say it was a huge success. Absolutely. James, you've been pretty quiet other than talking about when I tabled you. you remember <laughs> that time I tabled you twice? <laughs> yeah. Day? Good times. Remember the time I won Best Sports with Man Skyfires? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into let's the awards. Let's cover that. Come on. Let's get into the awards. So, so yeah, we did do awards. You didn't have to at this event. It, you know, it was really there for fun. Doesn't really mean much, the awards. Yeah. Um, you know, for warm, fuzzy feeling for coming and playing a narrative game. So, Death took out as best team. Um, so, that was Bill and Jules, uh, the team of Death. Well, let's just say team Jules Snakes. took it out. Team, team Snakes. Yeah, Team Snakes took it out, and I added five points. <laughs> yeah, so um, 
we had best painted army or best army, and that went to well the usual person that goes to every single time. James. Uh, James. James. Yeah. So I went to James. Uh, we had Monster Hunter, which went to Elric for his My his epic. ability. Yeah, his ability to take on Lords of Change. <laughs> oh, and a, and a Ghoul King on a zombie dragon. On a zombie dragon. Yeah. I did. I did put one of those down too. Yeah. So, so that was good. Every every game I put down a monster. Yeah. Um. So you got that heroic deed went to <laughs> to Mike because despite getting zero points through all the games. He's still stuck in there and still yeah. played. He still played all three games, you know. Yeah. And, and was still there right through throughout the day. Um, so gave it to him on that. And then it came down to the individual points as well for uh, overall. So there were two people on 19 points. The Order player, Andrew, and then Elric. And Elric was the underdog because... He was the only was destruction player. Yeah, he's the only player. destruction player. Yeah. So he won it. Yeah, um, which was yeah. So you were best overall at an event that you didn't run. So it must be a new feeling um, <laughs> there. But you definitely, you definitely deserved it. I think you you played to the Iron Jaws ethos of crunk, diet crunk. Well, just crunking things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah whether it was diet or not. So for the first time, he actually played them correctly. Is what we're saying. Well, I think it helps when you start three inches away <laughs> <laughs> from your, your opponent. It does. It really lends yeah, it does, to the actually. strength of the Iron Jaws when they're really close. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, you took out overall. The final standings for each uh, Grand Alliance was uh, 22 points for death because it was a team effort as well mm-hmm. for these points as well. So it didn't matter if you didn't get, well, as long as one of your, your team members picked up one of the points at least. So 22 points. I think you said that 14 of them. 14 for Jules. Were, were Jules. And, yeah, yeah. And mine. Carried you to the finish line there yeah. for the, the the team win. And then Order and, well, Team Elric. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're on 19. <laughs> and then Chaos, 7. Wait. 7 points. Wait, 7 points. Where have I heard that before? It's the same amount of points as I got in Game 2. Um, <laughs> so, you know. The changer of ways was yeah. in there, changing his ways. <laughs> Not from a list building perspective, but maybe a gameplay perspective. So he's halfway there. Yeah, to a fluffy list. Yeah, that doesn't involve portals in a forest. No, um, no, so, yeah. God. maybe a couple of more of these these yeah. narrative events. So what you're saying it. is we should play nothing but narrative events. I think it would be fun. I think uh, you could almost link it. Uh, you could do some skirmish. You could do some big games. You can do some smaller games. You can. I'd require you playing a game. <laughs> up, up, up. How, how many games? Were you there when I tabled you twice? Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. time. Good time. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be hanging. But you his... should play some games, James. He's going to hang his hat on this for the next, like, six I was going to let the first one go because, you know. Being able to start Iron Jaws basically within charge range. Yeah. You know, I figured, well. And then when uh, when Gork kind of did a divine intervention on my behalf, <laughs> I was like, well, everything turned up Iron Jaws for yeah. me. So I was like, oh, whatever. And I, I totally acknowledged it in a 2,000 point squared up game. That ain't, that ain't how it's going to pan out for me. <laughs> but then I did it again. <laughs> Had to go and do it again. You know, I got the championship ring. The doubters doubted. So I went back and did it again. I climbed that <laughs> mountaintop a second time. And I took down the disciples of Zinch. So I can't let it go. I can't let it go. It's got to be there. <laughs> if, if only you could see on radio the looks that we're giving him right now. Like, you are so full of you know what. Of adulation and worship, right? Yeah, no. That wasn't exactly what was coming through. No. Oh, well, that's all I'm feeling right now from you guys. Despite what the other emotions might be sending my way. <laughs> if you would like, I'm I'm willing to teach you guys how to play Age of Sigmar. <laughs> we can get together every Friday night. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Great success, I think. <laughs> Great success. The, the, the best. You know, there's, there's no greater event. You know, we, we evented well. 
Probably the best. <laughs> yeah. No one does it like beautiful like event. <laughs> yeah. I think it showed certainly our group that there is that that ability to go and do that. There right? is something else to do. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't need to always be tournament prep. It doesn't always need to be that hard line. Yeah. You know, close games. You can have a bit of fun with it. If, especially if you don't care what the outcome is. And it's not to say that you're not going to play well when you're you're playing your game, you know, but sure. I think it shows that you can, you don't have to take everything, like the hardcore stuff um, that you would take to a tournament, but you can show up and you can play and you can, you can just have some fun. Definitely. Yeah. Cause it, in the first game, like I was saying, I was like, well, I'll just move my whole army off because that's the objective, right? Let's play the objective. And mm. I was like, that is not what Iron Jaws would do. Like, I cannot get yeah, past. Exactly. And that's when I was like, screw it. Like, my personal objective is to now turn around and, and try to enact some revenge against James. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and just, you know, have a big smash fest. And, make, and actually make it a game as opposed to a, like a Benny Hill yeah. kind of short <laughs> to get across the board. You know, and once once you get past that mindset of like, I have to play a yeah. certain way and all this stuff and just have fun. That's well, that's the beauty of a narrative event is when you can not like take the edge off or whatever because the edge was on. Oh, God. He made Fire. a pun. Oh, no. That is a pun. <laughs> that was a pun. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. That should be the start of your show. That's going to be. On. That is. The edge is, is on. on. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Edit that out, Bill. You'd be amazed at what I can do with that recording. Great. <laughs> I don't know. It just it changes to me, anyways. It changes like the perspective of the game and like the style of enjoyment too. When mm-hmm. you're like, I'm not. Oh, I need to get a twenty nil and my my secondary objectives, and then so that next game I can ensure that I also try to win that one. And you're like weighing points for games you haven't played yet, and it, you know what I mean. You can just kick back and yeah, and just have fun. Well, in the game we played. I told you, you know, turn one, I just changed my idea of how I was going to play this game. All I want to do is kill your war boss. And that's yeah, all I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, your personal, that's, personal goal. Yeah, I, I had no chance of winning. I, I screwed yeah, up the list. Yeah, you so basically had I went your, and did what I wanted to do. Your goal king on so, uh, Zombie Dragon was yeah. pretty much your only hitter. Yeah, he was the only thing that was going to be able to. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to modify this. I don't, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get one point out of this game, but by God, it's gonna be a fun point. Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't care. It was this different sized games as well. Yeah, so. that's the that yeah. Was, that was fun. It was yeah. more fun than I thought it would be because mm-hmm. I'm I'm a guy that likes bigger. Yeah. Bi- you know, I like my games like I like my women, big and a complete mess. But uh, oh my God, my wife listens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that could okay. be the intro. Oh, no. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> And go again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Bill's gonna leave that in. I know he is. That's what I get for running my mouth earlier about. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right. I'm tired, babe. I love you. Um That's all right, coming whatever. Out. Our couch is comfortable. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was. I'm gonna stop talking. Because I'm just putting my foot in my mouth at this point. But yeah, it was uh it was great. And what well, we what you were talking about was the smaller point games being a lot more fun than you thought they yeah, would be. Yeah, especially the multiplayer because we we hardly ever do. Yeah. Well, there's hardly ever that many of us there at one any one given time. Mm-hmm. That is kind of one of the big uh, drawbacks. But yeah, those multiplayer games are just fun. It'd probably be so much more fun if there wasn't six <clears throat> snakes involved. And I'll already change it five hundred points. No. I mean, not that I'm worried. I tabled it, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, one of the things about some of the multiplayer games that we have played have had the wrong victory conditions. This one, it, it kind of prompted you to mix it up early and often and get into the middle. You know, like I said, I ran in there to get the attunement right away because that seemed like to me to be a big bonus and I needed it to go after the Stormcast. So... Had to do that. And we needed, I mean, we played a few multiplayer games, but they were just pretty much, you know, meet in the middle and beat face. And that's not really a great way to do a smaller point game with four people. This gave you a lot of things to do. Yeah. So I think this was a much better experience at a smaller point game with 
four people on a table. It was it was a really well crafted scenario. I thought that the mechanic of the challenges and the attunement you could go after both or one or the other and still have a pretty good chance of doing something positive for your side. So I thought that was pretty damn cool. Thank you, especially to my other, my coalescence counterparts, the guys who actually did a lot of the heavy lifting to make this thing happen. You know, Eric and Davey, the mortal realms, yeah. then uh, Aaron Whitek. The Raw team, Ming, yeah. Sean, Mitzi, Jimbo, Dan, I'm trying to think of everybody who's in on it. They're all named in the pack. Yeah, definitely. So, so. Yeah, I mean, did, did a bang up job, all you guys. Um, don't sell yourself too short. We'll sell you short. Don't, we'll take care yeah, of that well, part. Yeah, so, yeah, we got that one. But uh, on the, on the, idea of the mortal realms mortal realms just released another they call it a multicast because they did it on youtube as well and they cover a lot about the genesis of the coalescence and how they thought the event was going to go and i I, originally it was going to be just a eight store thing where they were trying to get eight stores linked together to do something and then you know one thing led to another one thing led to another gw got involved next thing you know it's worldwide and then it turned out to be what we had today which was pretty damned amazing yeah. So, and a lot of work went into that. Good on ya. So, there's our coalescence coverage. Yeah. Kind of crazy and disjointed, but... Yeah, uh, it's kind of a train wreck, a uh, flaming dumpster fire of a podcast, but we all had a blast, and it is now currently, what, uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. We started playing at 10. There's been some alcohol. Yeah. Just well, a little no, bit. Not, not much. Though. No, not enough. Yeah. There's never enough. Yeah, it's been a long day. Mm. Been a fun day. It's I think yeah. Uh, been a blast. I haven't played like run tournaments before. I think this was one of the most fun that I've ever run. You know, there wasn't running around for rules questions. There mm-hmm. wasn't having to sit there and enter a lot of data. I managed to sit and watch most of the games when I wasn't playing, which was was nice. Take some pictures, see how things were going. So I definitely think we'll try and run some of these. Maybe not as big as you know. Nine million people, but yeah, um, well, nine million is a, a hundred thousand people playing 100, nine million people. games. Oh, yeah, sorry, let's get Don't it right, blow it out of proportions here. <laughs> sorry, it's simple math a hundred times ten people is about a hundred thousand. Come on, give or take, <laughs> give mean, or take. There's yeah. a little margin of error on there, but small plus or minus. Plus it all depends minus. on where you put the decimal, point. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely something that I would want to do again, you know. Travel down from the the great north, yeah. Then, or even this is the sort of thing that you could run in your your garage. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, if you've got two or three tables, yeah. some friends to come around, but give a reason for everybody to meet up. Yeah. So, any further thoughts on coalescence? So, is there anything else we want to cover before we wrap this, or do we all just want to get some sleep? I don't think there was really much else. Mm-mm. Nope, not really. The calm before the forty k storm. Yeah. Where this becomes a 40K podcast. Hashtag right? not a 40K podcast. Yeah, hashtag not a 40K. No, because the next time you hear us, we will be talking about 40K. Age of Sigmar. <laughs> I mean, there will be a plethora of 40K. But. Yeah. It's all right, though. We're still... We are, a, we are officially the unofficial Games Workshop podcast. <laughs> so we will talk all things Games Workshop. Did I say that right? Yeah. Unofficially. I don't think we've ever been crowned. Yeah, but... Well, I'm unofficially crowning us. Well, there we go. The official unofficial. So now we're the officially unofficial. Yes. U.S. Midwest. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So. With our apologies to the real Midwest podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's call it. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can reach us at our email address, which is rollingbadpodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at rollingbad.com. We have a Twitter account for the podcast, which is at rolling underscore bad. We also have a Facebook page. You can just search for Rolling Bad on Facebook. We each have an individual Twitter account. You can reach me at Elric Edge. You can get me at at Bill Castello, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-O. And I'm at Tersoth. You can also see our work, mostly James, at our Instagram page, Rolling Bad, all one word.
Well, that was really horrible. No, oh, you're always complaining. I so, think I can do that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's easy. It's, yeah, it's not you. And plus, Bill will make you sound fantastic. I try. He's, he's pretty good it's at this. Gonna give me American accent. Sweet. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> he's not. He's not that good. It's he's not Disney Pixar good. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> I'm kind of like Ray Harryhausen, the old style <laughs> claymation good. <laughs> yeah, stop motion, that kind of stuff. I could do that. <laughs> you dirty double crossing rat! Because I think Forge World makes their resin with the bones of innocent children. <laughs> That's probably what justifies the price. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if they make Cheers. a Thunderhawk, I'm good. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> it makes this kind of like fine mortar yeah. type. Yeah, just mix it together. Mix it. Yeah, in. you can. If you put your ear, the the more expensive the model for Forge World, if if you put it to your ear, you can hear the wailing lamentations of children. I think. <laughs> That's something I heard. 